Hello and welcome to a discussion that provides a complete example of accounting for pensions. Watching this video will help prepare you for class. It is important that you view this video before class so we can learn more together in class. After viewing this video, you will be able to walk forward the fair market value of plan assets and the pension benefit obligation, as well as compute pension expense. These will be used to record the four journal entries related to defined benefit pension plans. You will also be able to read the footnotes related to defined benefit plans. We will walk through a complete example of accounting for a defined benefit pension plan. The information necessary is the different interest rates, the current year service cost, the change from actuary factors, and the service life. You will also need beginning balances for the PBO, the fair market value of assets, and the unrecognized amounts that are included in OCI at the beginning of the year. Unrecognized means not yet included in pension expense, and it is in OCI. The company contributions and payments to retirees are also needed. We will use this information to walk forward the fair market value of assets and the PBO from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and compute the pension expense. The fair market value of plan assets increases with contributions and decreases with payments to retirees. These two amounts were given. Actual returns on investments during the year also impact the ending balance. The actual return is computed as the beginning fair market value of plan assets multiplied by the percent of the actual return. The pension benefit obligation changes because employees work one more year, the actuary factors used to compute the obligation change, or the plan is changed. Payments to retirees reduce the obligation. In this example, the service cost is given, the interest cost is the beginning PBO multiplied by the discount rate. The loss from actuary changes means the company will have to pay retirees more and the obligation is increased. Pension expense consists of six different pieces. The cost of employees working one more year, the service cost, is computed by the actuary. Interest is the same amount as was computed in the PBO walk forward, beginning PBO times the discount rate. The estimated return is computed as the beginning fair market value of plan assets times the estimated return percent. There is a loss on prior service costs from changes to the plan in prior years that is sitting in OCI. A portion of this must move out of OCI and into pension expense each year. The total unrecognized amount divided by the service life is the amount that is added to pension expense. Losses are added to pension expense and gains are subtracted. The amount that is in OCI for actuary changes is related to the current year. Nothing is amortized to pension expense in the year the gain or loss is put into OCI. So no amount is included in pension expense until next year. The company has an unrecognized loss on assets of 200000 This is the cumulative difference in the actual and estimated return. A loss means that the actual return was less than expected. The cumulative difference is held in OCI until it becomes big enough to make a difference. Perform the 10% test. First, multiply the largest of the PBO or the fair market value of assets by 10%. The largest is the fair market value of $2.5 million. 10% is 250000 Any amount over 250000 is large enough to matter and a portion is moved to pension expense. The total cumulative difference of 200000 is not greater than 250000 and is therefore considered to be too small to matter. Nothing is amortized to pension expense. Add up all the components to get to the total pension expense that will be reported on the income statement. Now let's prepare the four journal entries related to pension expense for 2012 for the company that sponsors the pension plan. First, record the cash contribution made by the company to the pension trust fund. Decrease cash and decrease the liability. This amount was given. Second, let's put the changes to the pension benefit obligation that are related only in to the current year into OCI. 
In this example, the obligation increased due to a change in the factors used by the actuary. OCI is recorded as a loss and the pension liability increases. It is important to do a dash whatever the OCI is related to. The amounts for each type of OCI must be separately tracked and reported in the footnotes. The third entry is to record the difference in the estimated return in pension expense and the actual return that changed the pension trust fund assets. The actual loss was lower than the estimate and this excuse me, the actual was lower than the estimate and this is a loss. Record this loss to OCI with a debit and increase the pension liability. When the plan earns less then the, the company will have to contribute more. The fourth entry is to record pension expense. Increase the pension expense by the total amount calculated and record the amounts that are moved out of OCI and into pension expense that are included in the pension expense calculation. The prior service cost went into OCI with a debit. It comes out of OCI with a credit. This is the only amount included in the pension expense because the actuary change is not part of pension expense until next year and the deferred loss is not large enough to matter. The pension liability amount is the service cost plus interest cost less the estimated return from the pension expense calculation. The amount reported in the balance sheet is the difference in the fair market value of plan assets and the amount owed to employees. For this example, the amount of the assets is greater and the plan is overfunded. A prepaid pension asset is recorded on the balance sheet for $2,000. There are several items that are required to be included in the footnotes for a defined pension plan. Please take a moment and read the list of requirements. Pause the video if you need to. In addition to the previous items, the company is required to show their computation of pension expense and the rates that were used to do the pension accounting. Here is an example of JCPenney's footnote. You should recognize the same things that we included in pension expense when we did our calculation. The company is also required to report the changes to the pension benefit obligation and the fair market value of assets. You should notice most of the same line items that we included in our walk forward of PBO and plan assets. The two net to the fund status. The amount the plan is over or underfunded. This amount is also reported on the balance sheet. After viewing this video, you should be able to complete the accounting for a defined benefit plan. This includes computing the ending pension benefit obligation and fair market value of plan assets, computing the pension expense, and recording the four journal entries. After you've done this, you can determine the over or underfunded amount that is reported on the balance sheet and you will also be able to describe the items reported in the footnotes. Thank you for watching these videos that describe how to account for pension plans. Please complete the fill in the blank pages in your course pack and walk through the self-test, practice as you learn problems, and the easy test on studymyaccounting.com before class. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is really appreciated.